When the Buddha taught breath meditation to his son, Rahula, he started out with some preliminary meditations to get the mind in the right shape to be focusing on the breath. I've talked a lot in the past about the meditation on making your mind like earth, so that you're not shaken by events, you're not shaken by what's coming up outside or what's coming up inside your mind. But there are other meditations as well that build on that. And one of them is the Brahma Viharas, spreading goodwill into all beings. Compassion to all beings, empathetic joy to all beings, equanimity to all. That too should be based on the reflection of making your mind like earth. Because you realize there are a lot of beings out there who have been unkind to you, unkind to people you love, unkind to people you're concerned about, but you have to have goodwill for them. Of course, a good way to build up to that is first by thinking of people who are easier to extend goodwill to. And it's often useful to combine the practice of goodwill with thoughts about gratitude. When the Buddha talked about karma, it was one of the first things he comes up with, is that there are people for whom we should be grateful. It's because they had the choice to help us, or the choice not to help us, but they chose to help us. And so you want to feel some special goodwill for them, special appreciation for them. It makes it a lot easier to extend goodwill. A couple years back I was in France, I was staying in a hotel, and in the room there was a little booklet where the woman who owned the hotel was talking about the history of the place. And it was largely a history of her gratitude to her grandfather, her father, all the work they had done to make it such a nice hotel. This was way out in the, in the Massif Central, very isolated area, but it was a very nice hotel. And I was reading it, I couldn't help thinking about another account of the history of a hotel that I'd read here in America. It was in Utah. It was a combination restaurant and hotel, and there was a little booklet in the restaurant about the history of the place. And it was all about how the owner and her husband had had to fight off all kinds of difficulties. Setting up the place there originally, then the husband died and the wife was alone and the banks were going to swoop in and take it away from her because they thought she was just a woman they could do it very easily, but she showed them. And it was all about, I did it myself. That was the story of the, of the account. Very American. Not an ounce of gratitude for anybody. And I couldn't help notice that the hotel in France, even though it was in a poor area, was a much nicer place than the, the hotel and restaurant in Utah. And you wonder if it was connected. People who feel gratitude for others are, tend to be kinder to others. So add that to your practice of goodwill, when we spread thoughts of goodwill to the east, west, north, south, to people we like, people we don't like. Make a special category for the people you should feel grateful for, and just go down the list. Think of all the people for whom you have a debt of gratitude, Think people who have helped you that had to go out of their way, people in your family, teachers others who helped you along. They didn't have to do it, but they chose to help. And you have to realize how much you owe to others, in the sense that you're able to speak a human language, live in a human world, use things that other people have provided. You can think primarily also about the Buddha. He spent all that time establishing the Dharma. After he began to awaken, there were all kinds of things he could have done. He had no debts to anybody at that point. 
he decided it would be good to spend the rest of his life setting out the religion so that it would last for a long time, for people not only are right around him, but for people who would come in later generations in different countries, any place in the world. In fact, there are times when you have a sense that he was more concerned about us than we are concerned about ourselves. We think about doing something, we don't really calculate the long-term consequences, we just go for what we like. And then we find ourselves creating suffering for ourselves. As he said, he saw the world on fire. People setting fire to everything they touched. So lots of people we've never even met who are concerned for us left something behind. We owe them a debt of gratitude, too, even though we never met them. So spend some time thinking about all the people, all the beings who've helped you, and send them some special thoughts of goodwill wherever they are now. And goodwill, of course, includes compassion and empathetic joy. If they're suffering right now, you hope for them to become happy. If they're happy already or they're creating causes for happiness, you rejoice with them. You're not resentful of their happiness. And this serves two things. One, it reminds you that you are indebted to so many people. And this is how we live as human beings, through our debts to others. And it makes you more inclined to want to do something for other people, sort of pass on the goodness. So it's good for you. In fact, you can use this as a good motivation for meditation. You're trying to find a happiness that doesn't have to take anything away from anyone else. It doesn't harm anybody. We all want happiness, but if we take care in how we look for happiness, then it becomes something special. Otherwise, it's just everybody grubbing around and trying to find pleasures, grabbing what they can get. That's the Buddha's other vision before his awakening was seeing the world as this drying up stream filled with fish who were fighting one another to get that last little bit of water. And they were all going to die. It was all pointless, a lot of pointless suffering. So we don't have a sense of gratitude, and we don't have to take care in how we go about finding happiness. We're like those fish. If we do take care, we become more human. So that's the first benefit. The other benefit, of course, is when you send thoughts of goodwill to others. There are times when they can benefit immediately from that. This is something that the forest that John's talk a lot about, is the currents of the mind. And as you're sitting here meditating, you're actually broadcasting some good energy. The more stillness you have, the more concentration you have, the better the energy. And then you can dedicate it to others. Think of someone who may be suffering right now, and all too often the people who are suffering right now are the ones who are especially sensitive. So it's good to send it to them. It can have a calming effect on their minds. Now, this is something you can't control. It's like you're being a radio station sending out signals. You have no control over whose radio is on and whether they're tuned to your signal or not. Although it is more likely that People who are suffering tend to be very sensitive, and you can send a little extra oomph in their direction. It's all to the good. So to give a little juice to your practice of the Brahma Viharas, start with the people you feel grateful for. Not just people you like, but people you know have done something really good for you, went out of their way for you. When I first went to see a John Fu, it was shortly after my mother had died. And that was one of the first instructions he gave to me. When you meditate, spread thoughts of goodwill to your mother. Dedicate the merit to your mother. So this is the fabric with which in, within which we practice. Goodwill for everyone. And a very strong sense of those for whom we have to be grateful those from whom we've been dependent on. 
It's not that we're all one, but we are connected through our actions. So you want to make those connections good, and you can choose to make them good, starting with thoughts of goodwill. And then making your mind more and more solid inside, because that too is a gift to others. And that's one way of thinking. It allows the mind to put aside a lot of its issues with the world outside, its grievances with the world outside, and create a softer landing here in the present moment as you settle down with the breath.